The sleek silver starship streaked through the inky blackness of space, twin ion engines blazing blue-white against the void. Inside the cramped cockpit, Zack gripped the controls with white-knuckled intensity, his piercing blue eyes fixed on the viewscreen. They're gaining on us, Astra, he said through gritted teeth. I'm pushing the engines to max, but I don't know how much longer we can outrun them. Beside him, Astra leaned forward, her emerald skin glistening in the dim light. Her fiery red hair cascaded over her shoulders as she studied the sensor readouts with growing alarm. Proximity alert, the ship's computer announced in a calm female voice. Hostile craft approaching from aft quarter. Estimated time to weapons range, two minutes. Fuck! Zack slammed a fist against the control panel. I thought we'd have more time. They must have anticipated our escape route. Astra placed a slender hand on his arm, her touch electric even through his flight suit. We'll make it, Zack. We have to. Our love is too strong to be torn apart by their bigotry and hatred. Zack met her luminous golden eyes, drawing strength from the unwavering faith he saw there. She was right. They had defied both their peoples to be together. Her an Elysian, him a human. A love as pure and powerful as theirs could overcome any obstacle. Attention, unidentified craft. A stern voice crackled over the comm. This is the Earth Defense Force Cruiser Persecutor. Power down your engines and prepare to be boarded. Resistance will be met with lethal force. Persistent bastards, aren't they? Zack muttered. He keyed the comm. Persecutor, this is the private vessel Starfire. We are a civilian craft on a peaceful mission. We request that you break off pursuit immediately. Negative, Starfire, the EDF officer replied coldly. We have orders to apprehend the human traitor, Zachary Adams, and his Xeno accomplice. Surrender now or be destroyed. Sack cut the connection with a bitter laugh. Traitor, he spat. That's rich coming from those xenophobic pricks. I'm a traitor for falling in love with the most amazing woman in the galaxy. And I'm a traitor for daring to love a human, Astra said softly, her melodic voice tinged with sorrow. My people are no better, Zack. They see our union as an abomination, a betrayal of Elysian purity. Weapons lock detected, the computer reported dispassionately. Probability of hull breach, 96%. Zack's jaw clenched as he wrenched the ship into a stomach-churning spiral, narrowly evading the first salvo of plasma bolts. The Persecutor was a top-of-the-line warship, armed to the teeth. The Starfire was a small civilian yacht, fast but lightly shielded. They couldn't win a straight-up fight, but Zack had a few tricks up his sleeve. He was a crack pilot, one of the best in the Earth fleet before his betrayal. And the Starfire had a state-of-the-art cloaking device, courtesy of Astra's Elysian contacts. If they could just break sensor lock for a few seconds, hang on, babe. Zack said as his hands flew over the controls. This is going to get bumpy. The ship shuddered as another plasma bolt clipped their shields, alarms blaring in protest. Astra braced herself against the bulkhead, emerald face set in grim determination. Zack sent the ship into a dizzying corkscrew, the inertial dampeners struggling to compensate. At the apex of the maneuver, he slapped the cloak control. For a heart-stopping instant, nothing happened. Then the ship vanished from sensors, the cloaking field enveloping them like a high-tech invisibility blanket. The persecutor sailed past, unable to reacquire target lock. Fuck yeah, Zack crowed, pumping a fist in triumph. Choke on that, you EDF dickheads. Astra sagged back in her seat, relief etched on her lovely features. I thought, I thought that was it, that we were done for. Zack reached over to squeeze her hand. Never. I'll never let them tear us apart, Astra. You and me, babe. It's us against the whole damn verse. She smiled at him, love and trust shining in her golden eyes. Us against the verse, she echoed. I like the sound of that. Zack grinned fiercely as he plotted a new course, the ship streaking deeper into uncharted space. Earth, Elysia, the homes that had rejected them, all fell away behind. Ahead lay only the unknown ripe with danger and possibility, but they would face it together, this human and his alien love. For their bond was stronger than any force in the galaxy, and woe betide any who dared stand in their way. The starfire drifted through the silent void, its cloaking field shimmering faintly in the starlight. In the aft compartment, Zack and Astra huddled over a hollow map, the ghostly blue lines of hyperspace routes crisscrossing the galaxy. We can't keep running forever, 
Astra said, her melodic voice heavy with weariness. Sooner or later, they'll catch up to us, and then... She trailed off, unable to give voice to the grim fate that awaited them. Zack's jaw tightened, his blue eyes hard as diamonds. Like hell they will. We'll find a way, Astra. Somewhere they can't touch us. Somewhere we can be free. She looked up at him, her golden eyes searching his face. But where, Zack? The Earth Defense Force's reach spans a hundred systems, and the Elysian Star Empire is even vaster. There's nowhere in known space we can hide from them. A slow grin spread across Zack's chiseled features. Then we go where no one else has gone before. We chart a course for the uncharted territories. Astra's eyes widened. The uncharted territories? But Zack, that's... that's madness. No one who's ventured beyond the frontier has ever returned. Exactly, Zack said, his grin widening, which means they won't expect us to go there. It's the perfect place to disappear, to start a new life together. Astra bit her lip, torn between fear and the tantalizing promise of freedom. She knew the stories of the uncharted territories, the tales of strange, twisted worlds and alien horrors beyond imagining. But she also knew the cold, implacable hatred of those who hunted them. What choice did they have? All right, she said at last, her voice barely above a whisper. Let's do it. Let's chart a course for the unknown. Zack whooped and swept her into his arms, his lips claiming hers in a searing kiss. Astra melted against him, her emerald skin flushing jade as passion ignited between them. They made love there in the aft compartment, their bodies moving together in the timeless rhythm of desire. For a blissful eternity, there was no Earth Defense Force, no Elysian Star Empire, only the fire of their bond, the unbreakable connection that had defied the prejudice of two worlds. Afterwards, they lay entwined on the narrow bunk, Astra's head resting on Zack's broad chest. I love you, she murmured, her fingers tracing idle patterns on his sweat-slicked skin. No matter what happens, I'll never regret choosing you. Zack pressed a kiss to her fiery hair. I love you too, babe, more than anything in this whole fucked up universe. And I swear I'll find us a home, a place where we can be together without fear or shame. The ship hummed around them, the steady thrum of the engines, a soothing lullaby. Beyond the viewports, the stars beckoned, ancient, unknowable, and full of promise. Zack and Astra slept then, lulled by the gentle vibration of the deck plates and the warmth of each other's presence. And as they dreamed, the starfire bore them ever onward, into the uncharted depths of space and destiny. But the specter of pursuit was never far behind. Even as they drifted in that timeless, starlit moment, the forces that sought to destroy them were gathering like storm clouds on the horizon. On the bridge of the Persecutor, Captain Thaddeus Kane stared at the main view screen with cold, pitiless eyes. The image of the starfire's ion trail hung before him, a ghostly blue contrail fading into the void. They can't run forever, he growled, his voice like gravel. Sooner or later, they'll make a mistake. And when they do, we'll be there to bring the Emperor's justice down upon their heads. His executive officer, a lean, hawkish man named Silas Deckard, nodded grimly. The Xeno bitch and her human pet can't hide from us, sir. We'll scour the galaxy until we find them. Kane's lips twisted in a humorless smile. Oh, we'll find them, all right. And when we do... I'll take great pleasure in watching them burn. The persecutor surged forward, its mighty engines roaring with purpose. On its hull, the crest of the Earth Defense Force gleamed in the starlight. A stylized eagle, its talons poised to strike. And in its wake, the stars trembled, as if in anticipation of the reckoning to come. The uncharted territories loomed before them, a vast expanse of unknown stars and nameless worlds. The starfire plunged into that abyss, its sensors probing the darkness for any sign of danger or refuge. At the helm, Zack's eyes flicked over the readouts, his brow furrowed in concentration. Beside him, Astra manned the comms and scanners, her slender fingers dancing over the controls with practiced ease. Anything? Zack asked, his voice tight with tension. Astra shook her head, her fiery hair cascading over her shoulders. Nothing yet, just empty space and dead stars. Zack nodded grimly. They had been flying for days now, pushing deeper and deeper into the uncharted void. Each passing hour brought them further from the worlds they had known, the lives they had left behind. 
but it also brought them closer to the tantalizing promise of freedom, of a future together without fear or persecution. And for that, Zack knew, he would fly to the very edge of the universe itself. Suddenly, the ship shuddered, the deck plates bucking beneath their feet. Alarms blared as the sensors screamed in warning. What the fuck, old toe, Zack growled, his hands flying over the controls. Astra, talk to me. What's happening? I don't know, she cried, her golden eyes wide with fear. The scanners are going crazy. It's like we've flown into some kind of anomaly. The view screen flickered, static washing over the image of the stars. Then with a sickening lurch, the starfire emerged into normal space once more. But the stars that greeted them were unlike any they had ever seen. Vast and alien, they burned with a cold, unwholesome light, their colors all wrong. And in their midst, hanging in the void like a great bloated carcass, was a ship. It was massive, easily dwarfing the starfire. Its hull was a twisted, organic nightmare, all pulsing flesh and writhing tentacles. It seemed to throb with a hideous, unnatural life, as if it were not a ship at all, but some vast, eldritch creature born of the void itself. By the gods, Astra breathed, her voice trembling. What? What is that thing? Zack swallowed hard, his mouth suddenly dry. I don't know, but I've got a bad feeling about this. As if in response to his words, the alien ship began to move, its tentacles uncoiling like the limbs of some great, predatory beast. A hatch yawned open in its side, a gaping maw of darkness that seemed to beckon them forward. Zack! Astra whispered, her hand finding his. I'm scared! He squeezed her fingers, drawing strength from her touch. Me too, babe. But we've come too far to turn back now. Whatever's waiting for us on that ship, we'll face it together. With a deep breath, Zack guided the Starfire forward, the small ship drifting inexorably towards the waiting jaws of the unknown. As they crossed the threshold, the darkness swallowed them whole, and the stars vanished behind them. They were alone now, two tiny sparks of life in the vast, uncaring void. But they were together, and in that moment, that was all that mattered. Light bloomed around them as they emerged into a vast, cavernous hangar, the walls pulsed with a sickly organic light, the air thick with the stench of decay. And there waiting for them was a figure. It was tall and gaunt, its flesh a mottled gray. Eyes like black pits stared out from a face that was all wrong, too long and too narrow, with a mouth that split its head almost in two. It raised a hand in greeting, its voice a rasping hiss that seemed to coil around them like a living thing. Welcome, travelers. It said, its lipless mouth twisting in a grotesque parody of a smile. Welcome to the necropolis. Zack and Astra exchanged a look of pure, primal terror. They had sought escape, a haven from the prejudice and hatred of their own kind. But in the depths of the uncharted void, they had found something far, far worse. The alien's name was Zaloth, and it was, it claimed, the last of its kind. It led them through the twisting, organic corridors of the necropolis, its rasping voice echoing in the fetid air. Long ago, it said, my people ruled the stars. Our empire spanned a thousand worlds, our power unrivaled. But we grew proud, and in our pride we delved too deep into the forbidden arts. We sought to conquer death itself, to make ourselves immortal gods. Zack and Astra followed, their hearts pounding, their hands clasped tight. The walls around them pulsed and throbbed as if the very ship itself were alive. But the universe has a way of punishing hubris, Zaloth continued, its black eyes glittering. Our experiments unleashed a plague upon our kind, a twisted corruption that swept through our empire like wildfire. It warped flesh and mind alike, turning us into this. It gestured to itself, to the grotesque, misshapen thing it had become. Now I am all that remains, the last guardian of a dead race, doomed to wander the stars in this cursed ship for all eternity. Astra shuddered, pressing closer to Zack. That's... that's horrible. I'm so sorry. Zaloth waved a dismissive hand. I do not seek pity, child. I seek redemption. And perhaps in you I have found it at last. Zack's eyes narrowed. What do you mean? The alien smiled, a hideous stretching of its lipless mouth. You seek refuge, do you not? 
a place where you can be together, free from the judgment of your own kind, I can offer you that and more. It led them into a vast circular chamber, dominated by a pulsing, fleshy mass that hung from the ceiling like some obscene chandelier. Behold, Zala said, its voice reverent, the heart of the necropolis, the source of its power, and its curse. Zack stared up at the thing, his gut twisting with revulsion. What? What does it do? It grants life, Zalath whispered. Eternal life, at a price. Join with it, and you will never age, never sicken, never die. You will be together, forever, just as you desire. Astra's eyes widened. Forever? But, but that's... Madness, Zack finished, his voice hard. We won't be slaves to that, that thing. We won't let it twist us, corrupt us, like it did to you and your people. Zaloth's eyes flashed with anger. Foolish boy, you would reject the greatest gift the universe has to offer? For what, a fleeting moment of mortal passion? Zack drew himself up, his jaw set. Our love isn't fleeting. It's real and it's pure and it's worth more than any twisted immortality you could offer us. Astra nodded, her golden eyes blazing. We choose each other, Zaloth. Not your curse, not your false promise of eternal life. Just us, together, for as long as the stars allow. The alien's face contorted with rage. Then you will die together, fools! It lunged at them, its twisted limbs flailing, its mouth gaping wide. Zack shoved Astra behind him, his hands scrabbling for the blaster at his hip. But before he could draw it, a searing lance of light pierced the chamber, striking Zaloth square in the chest. The alien howled in agony, its flesh sizzling and bubbling as it staggered back. Zack whirled, his eyes widening in shock. There, framed in the doorway, stood Captain Thaddeus Kane, a smoking plasma rifle in his hands. You, Zack breathed. How did you find us? Kane's lips twisted in a grim smile. Did you really think you could escape the Emperor's justice, boy? I've been tracking you since the moment you fled Earth, and now it's time to face the consequences of your betrayal. He leveled the rifle at Zack's chest, his finger tightening on the trigger. Astra screamed, throwing herself in front of her lover, but the shot never came. Instead, a second lance of light pierced the chamber, striking Kane in the back. The captain stiffened, his eyes going wide with shock and pain. Then he crumpled to the deck, revealing the figure standing behind him. It was Silas Deckard, Kane's executive officer. The lean, hawkish man lowered his own rifle, his face a mask of grim determination. Deckard, Zack said, his voice hoarse with disbelief. What? Why? Because he's right, Deckard said, nodding to Zaloth's smoldering corpse, about the price of immortality, about the corruption of power. I've seen it firsthand in the Empire in the Defense Force. The rot goes all the way to the top. He met Zack's gaze, his eyes haunted. I joined up to protect people, to serve a higher cause. But somewhere along the way, we lost sight of that. We became the very thing we were supposed to stand against. Astra stepped forward, her hand outstretched. Come with us, Silas. Help us find a better way, a way forward for all of us. Deckard hesitated, then nodded slowly. All right, let's get the hell out of here before more of Kane's goons show up. Together, the three of them raced back to the Starfire, leaving the twisted horror of the necropolis behind. The ship detached from the alien vessel, its engines flaring to life as it leapt forward into the starry void. And as they flew, Zack and Astra held each other close, their love burning bright against the darkness. They had been tested, had faced horrors beyond imagining, but they had endured, and in the end they had triumphed. For they knew now more than ever that their bond was unbreakable, that no matter what the universe threw at them, they would face it together, hand in hand, heart to heart. And in the face of that love, even the stars themselves seemed to bow in reverence, as if acknowledging the purity, the power of the human spirit. The starfire drifted through the endless expanse of space, its engines humming softly in the stillness. In the cockpit, Zack, Astra, and Silas huddled around the navigation console, their faces bathed in the soft glow of the screens. Where to now, um? Silas asked, his voice gruff but not unkind. We can't go back to Earth or Alicia, not after everything that's happened. Zack nodded, his jaw set. 
We need to find somewhere new. Somewhere we can start over. Build a life together. Astra's slender fingers danced over the controls, bringing up a star chart of the surrounding systems. There, she said, pointing to a small, unassuming dot on the map. Refiji's Prime. It's a remote colony world, far from the main trade routes. The Empire and the Defense Force have no presence there. Silas leaned in, his hawkish eyes narrowing. I've heard of it. Mostly agricultural, some light industry. Not much in the way of law enforcement or government oversight. Zack grinned. Sounds perfect. A place where a couple of star-crossed lovers and an ex-military man can disappear, start fresh. Astra returned his smile, her golden eyes shining. A place we can call home. Silas nodded, a rare smile tugging at his thin lips. All right then. Refiji's prime it is. The Starfire leapt forward, its engines flaring brightly as it charted a course for the distant world. And as the stars streaked past the viewports, Zack and Astra held each other close, their hearts full of hope and promise. They made planetfall on Refiji's prime three days later, setting down on the outskirts of a small rustic settlement. The air was clean and sweet, the sky a brilliant, endless blue. As they stepped out onto the verdant soil, Astra took a deep breath, her emerald skin seeming to glow in the warm sunlight. It's beautiful, she murmured, her voice thick with emotion. Zack took her hand, his callous fingers intertwining with her slender ones. It's a new beginning, he said softly, for all of us. Silas shouldered his pack, his lean frame seeming to relax for the first time in years. I've got some contacts in the settlement, people who can help us get set up, find work, blend in. Zack clapped the older man on the shoulder. Lead the way, Silas. It's time to start living. And so they did. In the months that followed, Zack and Astra built a life together on Refiji's prime. They found work in the settlement, Zack as a mechanic, Astra as a medic. They made friends, put down roots, learned to call the little world home. And always their love burned bright, a beacon of hope and joy in a universe that had once seemed so cold and cruel. Even Silas found a measure of peace on Refiji's prime. The haunted look faded from his eyes, replaced by a quiet contentment as he took up work as a security consultant for the settlement. It was a simple life, but a good one. A life filled with laughter and love, with the warmth of companionship and the joy of each new day. But even as they settled into their new existence, Zack and Astra knew that the universe was not done with them yet. For their story had become legend, whispered in the corners of spaceport bars and told around the glow of ships' engines. The tale of the human and the Elysian, who had defied the prejudice of their people, who had faced down the horrors of the void and emerged triumphant. The tale of a love that had conquered all, that had proven the power of the spirit of sentient life in all its forms. And as those stories spread, as they took on a life of their own, something began to change. Slowly, imperceptibly at first, but with gathering momentum, the old hatreds began to fade. For if a human and an Elysian could find love, could build a life together, then perhaps the differences between peoples were not so great as they had once seemed. Perhaps there was more that united the races of the galaxy than divided them. It would not happen overnight. The scars of centuries of prejudice and mistrust could not be healed in a single moment. But with each passing day, with each retelling of Zack and Astra's story, the universe moved a little closer to understanding, to acceptance, to peace. And on a small, unassuming world, two lovers held each other close under an alien sky, their hearts full of the promise of a brighter tomorrow. For they had shown the galaxy the truth of the human spirit, the strong will and boundless compassion that dwelt within the heart of every man and woman. They had shown that love True love could conquer any obstacle, bridge any divide, and light the way to a future where all beings could live in harmony and understanding. And in the end, that was the greatest gift of all. Years passed, and the legend of Zack and Astra only grew. Their tale was told and retold across the stars, a shining beacon of hope and inspiration to all who heard it. And on Refiji's prime, the lovers lived out their days in peace and contentment. They raised a family, watched their children grow tall and strong under the alien sun. They grew old together, their love only deepening with each passing year. And when at last their time came to an end, they faced that final journey as they had faced every challenge in their long and storied lives. Together, 
Hand in hand, heart to heart, they slipped away into that endless starry night, their spirits soaring free and unbound at last. But their legacy lived on, carried in the hearts and minds of all those they had touched. In the stories that would be told for generations to come, in the changed galaxy they had helped to build. For they had shown the universe the true power of love, of compassion, of the unbreakable bond between two souls. And in the end, that was the greatest adventure of all.